Welcome to the Fremont Group. This is our webinar series based upon the book Minding My Own Business. My name is Dirk Dieters. I'm the Executive Director of the Fremont Group and I'll be presenting today. Today we are dealing with risk. The Fremont Group is a nonprofit management consulting firm. Our clients are small business owners who work in their business regardless of industry. Our company motto is, you only have what you give. It's by giving of yourself that you grow rich. And our success partners implement this through mentoring, coaching, and management consulting directly with the clients that they're assigned to. We also have a website at www.tfginfo.org, a Patreon blog, uh, which contains this and many other uh, webinars and informational posts on um, management. And uh, we have the Minding My Own Business, this webinar series, and we have Minding My Own Business workshops each Monday afternoon. And of course, the book Minding My Own Business, which is available on Amazon. Outside of the management consulting, consulting we also have an accounting division uh, we determined a long time ago that many of our clients uh, had difficulty implementing things because their books were so bad and things weren't kept track of properly and they didn't have the ability in-house or they had turnover or whatever it might be uh, to, and so they were, as a result, they were uh, unable to uh, uh, create the cash flows and the uh, different things that we would uh, implement. And so we've started an accounting division, which is separate, and we do outsourced QuickBooks accounting that's tied in with um, our consulting or standalone. Uh, if, when it's tied in, it's TFG 360, uh, which implements all of our different aspects of our work. This webinar is about risk and failing to grow and adapt. The six responsibilities of the small business owner uh, from the book that I wrote, Minding My Own Business, start with number one, you have to make a minimum mandatory percentage of profit. Secondly, you have to create cost controls such as budgets and cash flows and so on uh, that will assure the implementation of that and, and the creation of that profit. Thirdly, uh, you have to create an organizational structure that is responsible and held accountable for the, the implementation of those cost controls, again, so that minimum mandatory percentage of profit is produced. Last, third, fourthly, rather, you must sell. Selling, everyone knows external. Uh, we also must sell internally. Uh, and we get into that quite extensively. Fifthly, you must minimize risk, which is where we are now. And lastly, you must be having fun. With the six responsibilities of the small business owner, we break the year into six two-month segments. And this being uh, October, uh, we are on risk. And that's what this uh, webinar deals with. So you build a business and you did it well and it was not easy. You may have had days when you've had to pawn your car just to make payroll. You may have had days when you had to lay people off and do things you didn't like to do. You may not. I've, we've visited clients that have a drawer full of uh, payroll checks to themselves that they have been unable to cash. But whatever it had to be done, you did it and you worked your way through it. And you've worked and you're somewhere within the stage uh, of the three stages of entrepreneurship. You start off as a technician, a person who understands how to actually provide the good and service uh, of your uh, company. And then you moved up to manager, managing people who are providing those services. And some people actually make it to the executive level uh, where they are now managing the managers and uh, spend their time uh, in strategic planning and, and, and directing and truly running the business. That, of course, is where we want to get everyone. And that's where you have to get if you really expect to uh, make the money that you deserve to make from all of the work that you've put into uh, building up the company that you have. But you have an enemy. And you have something that's willing to in your way that wants to stop you from those transitions and also wants to take away all of the success that you've had. And that enemy is complacency. Anyone remember Blackberries? Remember those big square things with all the with the full keyboard laid out on them that you punched around? 
stop and think about the position that they had in the uh, uh, market. They were the absolute top of the line. They were, uh, we had presidents of the United States who wouldn't give up their Blackberry. Uh, this was the thing, you could get emails on it, but they were cumbersome and they were horrible, frankly, in compared to what we have now. And yet Blackberry wouldn't adapt. They did not change. They didn't incorporate the new technology. They didn't want to bring uh, the, all of the bells and whistles that Apple finally brought in uh, uh, to the iPhone and uh, the, su the successors from those. Uh, and so what happened to them? They died. And that's what can happen if you don't adapt to your competition. The world changes. Stop and think about how different your industry was five years ago. Think about how you had to sell differently. Think about how your employees were different. Think about how pricing was different. Think about how almost everything you are doing was totally different. Five years from now, it will probably change that much and more. Uh, one of the books that I uh, made a real uh, mark on me back from college days was Toffler and its future shock and talking about how the pace of change just continues to accelerate. Well, that is, continues to happen, and that is true. And if you don't embrace that change, uh, you aren't going to survive. You are going to be another BlackBerry. So how do you overcome that complacency? Well, it starts with embracing change. Now, the, you can get carried away with it too. You have a core business, you have a way things work, and you do not ever just throw that away unless it's just totally broken, uh, but it's probably not. You've probably been successful and you're probably doing things well, but you need to keep dabbling around the edges. You need to keep pulling in uh, a new product line or a new way of doing things or a new management style or a new something. Uh, just maybe it's a diff just a different way of handling your people. Maybe it's a, a different sales technique. Maybe it's embracing the social media. None of those things are going to be the answer and you don't know where the next Apple iPhone is, um, but you do know where the Blackberries are. And so uh, it's the same thing in searching for the change and the adaption uh, that your company has to make. You have to keep sticking your toe into a number of different things, but on a limited enough basis so that when the, they don't work and the majority of them won't, you aren't getting hurt by it. But when you do click on to the thing that is the next Apple phone, uh, then you are ready and prepared and ahead of the market. That's why you need to have, as the owner of the business, the time to spend on doing that type of strategic planning and looking, looking at your competition and looking at other areas. At the Fremont Group, we have a half a dozen different success partners. Our success partners are people who have been there and done that. They're assigned to you specifically. They get to know you. And what do they do? They keep pushing you and keep pushing you and keep you focused and moving forward and trying the next thing. And always with a mind, however, on your current budget and where you stand. What a success partner can provide is focus. Consultants and people that try to tell you that they are going to fix your business or they are going to do this or that are lying to you because the only person that can really make a change in your business is yourself. However, what a success partner can do is create focus and, and so that they're constantly holding you accountable for the changes that have to that can be made for the better. The things that can actually take you to the next level that you said if you wanted to do when you met with, the, with them originally and laid out your goals, but now you aren't doing, that they can kick you and make you hold you accountable for some of those results and for implementing some of that change and for pointing out some of the things that a third par a different pair of eyes uh, is seeing within your market and, and in just in business in general that should be tried and implemented to some degree uh, in your business so that you can get rid of that enemy of complacency. So how would you deal with the Fremont Group? Well, our success partners have a process. What we do is we come in for about a day and a half and we meet with you and we make sure that there's a match. We make sure that there's things that can be done for you. We get to know you, your staff, your business, 
what it is you're trying to do, what your goals are in particular, uh, where you're trying to take your company. And from that initial consultation that we have, we walk, you leave it with an action plan that the two of us develop, our success partner and yourself, as to here are the things that have to be done to get you from where you are right now to where you want to go. What are the rocks in the road? What are the boulders in the road? What things have to be moved first? What priority should we take? Those are the things that go into your action plan. And then you meet weekly by Zoom, uh, and each of you is given assignments each week. You give us an assignment, we give you an assignment. And we create the focus and the accountability uh, that you need to have to continue forward. Visit our website at www.tfginfo.org or give us a call. We'll be glad to speak. Our Denver office is 303-338-9300. Our Tucson office is 520-638-7863. You can email us at admin at tfginfo.org and take a look at our blog also on our Patreon site. We hope to hear from you and let's get rid of your enemy and make this a successful year.